Is Tesla supercharging network still leaving other fast charging networks in the dust? I'm Frugal Tesla Guy, and we're going to take a look at the growth of EV charging and if it's ready for mainstream. As most Tesla owners know, the supercharging network has proven itself time and again of being more reliable than any other network available. It isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but continues to grow and improve. As more and more non-Tesla electric vehicles hit the market, they will need a reliable charging network for long distance travel. And although there are several independent networks available, the most widely known, at least in the United States, is Electrify America. And although it hasn't fully matured, we have seen significant growth over the last few years. But if you are still trying to decide between a Tesla or any other vehicle without that Tesla logo on the hood, the question that needs to be asked is DC fast charging network big enough and reliable? Now, if you had asked that question two years ago, most people would have agreed that the answer to that question was no. But now in 2021, it's a different story. Now, according to the Alternative Fuels Data Center, this is what the DC fast charging network looked like in December of 2018. There were a total of 1,929 CCS charging stations. Now, as you can clearly see, it may have been possible to go up and down the west and east coast, but there were way too many gaps between the two to be able to travel with confidence from coast to coast. Especially when you consider there weren't any stations in Wyoming, North or South Dakota and Montana Minus, of course, the one near Idaho. Two and a half years later, the number of charging stations more than doubled with 4,349 CCS charging stations. And although many of the gaps have been filled, there is still a big void in the Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. However, traveling from coast to coast is now very much a possibility using this network, including southern Canada. So how does this compare to the Tesla supercharging network? Well, one thing to keep in mind is Tesla got a head start by several years and has also seen significant growth. This is what the Tesla supercharging network looked like in December of 2018. Although the number of stations is significantly less than the CCS network, the spacing is the key. The only significant gap was in Northern Montana and North Dakota. Otherwise, there was very little holding you back from traveling long distances in most of the United States. Take it two and a half years later, and the number of stations almost doubled, and the gap in North Dakota was filled in along with finishing up the line in Southern Canada. You'll also notice a big increase on both the West and East Coast. Now, when you look at all four maps together, what stands out to me is the fact Tesla really put some thought behind the placement of each supercharger. Despite the fact Tesla technically has a significantly smaller number of charging stations, the fact that they were spread out evenly across the US makes it a much better network. Now on top of that, you can't let the number of charging stations fool you. If you take the map out of each equation and look at the numbers alone, the CCS charging network looks much more impressive. But when you look at the number of actual charging outlets or stalls, Tesla pulls out way ahead. Now, this may not seem like a big deal now, but for anyone with a Tesla that has had to wait in a line at a supercharger, you know how frustrating that can be. Now, most superchargers have no less than six stalls, and that's on the low end. Although it should be noted that there are a handful of stations with only four stalls, but typically you'll see closer to eight or 12. Then of course, there are the stations with 20, 40 and over 50 stalls at one station alone. Baker and Kettleman City, both in California, have 40 stalls. And most recently constructed Fireball, also in California, has 56 stalls, with what looks like more room to grow. Now the CCS charging network, and in particular Electrify America, typically only has four stalls. However, there are exceptions with as many as six, eight, or as many as 10 stalls. Okay, great. We have seen growth in the DC fast charging network, but what about reliability? Well, up until this point, DC fast charging was notorious for low charging rates, 
charging dropouts, stalls that are offline or just not working, payments not being accepted, and the list goes on and on. And although many of those issues still exist today, it's not nearly as frequent. Now, I can't speak from experience because I haven't had the opportunity to put the DC fast charging network to the test. So I suggest you check out Out of Spec on YouTube as he gives a real world perspective using Electrify America on road trips with several different types of EVs. I'll post a link to the channel in the description below. Also, if you have recently used Electrify America or the fast DC charging network in general, be sure to share your experience in the comments section below. Now compare that to the Tesla supercharging experience. Get out of your car, plug it in, and it just works. Of course, the supercharging network does come with its own issues, such as occasional wait times at the congested superchargers, especially in highly populated areas like LA and the Bay Area. Slow charging rates when sharing power with another Tesla at Gen 2 supercharger. And there's the occasional stall that may be out of commission. It's also worth mentioning Ford is working with the Green Lots charging network to help expand it, which based off the latest map, they have a long way to go. But they are also working with Electrify America to help make the user experience better. Rivian has announced they will be building the Rivian Adventure Network, mainly in the United States, but also including parts of Canada as well. Now they plan on building over 3,500 DC fast chargers at over 600 sites by the end of 2023. According to Rivian, they will be exclusively for Rivian owners and will work much like the supercharging network where you just plug in without swiping a credit card. Now they also plan to install what they call Rivian Waypoints, which are like Tesla destination and level two chargers that will add about 25 miles of range per hour and will mainly be at shopping complexes, hotels, campsites, and parks. Bottom line, if you watched my video discussing this topic over two years ago, the Tesla supercharging network had a clear advantage by a landslide than any other network available at the time. And although I still feel it's the best network available, others are on its heels looking to get a piece of the EV pie. Electrify America along with other networks continue to grow rapidly. Rivian has exciting plans for their fast charging network and I'm sure we'll see many more exciting things to happen in the years to come, helping to slowly close that gap between the availability of gas stations and DC fast charging. In fact, the number of gas stations in the United States has been declining over the last few decades and continues on that trend. Now, I don't think we're at a place where we can convince a majority of gas car owners to make the switch, but it is getting much more tempting for those that have, at the very least, been thinking about making the transition. The combination of more EVs becoming available by several different companies and the growing DC fast charging network makes it more difficult to make arguments against EVs. So what do you think? Are we getting closer to the EV domination or is it all just a pipe dream? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below. Well, thank you all so much for watching and you know the drill, like, subscribe, and stay positively charged.